Hey guys, welcome to this week's weather outlook. We've got a lot to talk about from some of that ice into the northeast. We've got a huge Pacific storm, a bit quiet across the central part of the country, and uh, we're going to really kind of dig into that. Here's where we are now. This is the storm that's moving across the country that really brought the ice here to parts of Wisconsin, Iowa, into parts of Michigan. Now this storm is moving east, and we've got a huge storm out west. That's been bringing the rain and the snow here. Even it's the same storm that put the tornado. You may have seen some of the footage there into San Francisco. That's moving into the uh, the northern Rockies, bringing some snow here. Across the west, it's going to stay active. There goes your storm away from the coast, but this is the next one we're looking at. It could bring some really heavy snow into the Cascades. Winter storm watch is already up for this region over the next couple of days, and yep, we're watching some cold air up here. Some of this is going to break off and move south as we head into the weekend across the central and eastern United States. Hey guys, thanks for checking the video out. If you're brand new, hey, I'm Travis. I used to be a chief meteorologist on television. I got out of that business years ago. I found myself following these models and forecasting. And if you like that kind of stuff, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. My goal, a straightforward weather forecast, no clickbait, no hype. And I think because of that, sometimes I don't get as much traffic. So if you want to help, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, come back. And uh, and above all, I love hearing from you guys. So let, leave me a comment below what you like about the forecast, what you'd like to see different. I can't please everybody, I understand. But uh, we, we're going to try to give a, an entire nationwide outlook here. Here comes that cold as we head into uh, the weekend. One blast heading in Thursday and Friday. But the real shot holds off until, I think, Saturday and Sunday. And this looks to me like it pushes all the way to the Gulf Coast. It's not going to stick around, though. I think our pattern becomes progressive after this as this back here moves east. You can see it pushing that cold air into the northeast. And now we have more of a zonal flow as we get toward Christmas. I don't know that that's blowtorch for the northeast. I don't know that it's blowtorch for the central U.S. To me, it just looks kind of average with your really cold air stuck up in here. And we'll probably have ups and downs in the midst of this. Let's kick things off with what's going on across the east. We've got this system that's moving here into Pennsylvania, New York. It's bringing a wintry mix here. We've also got an area of low pressure that's moving through the northern plains. It's bringing some snow to southern parts of Canada, also North Dakota into parts of Minnesota, even a little bit of wintry mix here on the southern side of this. Some rain here, some thunderstorms too across parts of Oklahoma. Some of those could get a little strong. And then here comes our next storm into the west coast as we head into Monday. Snow here uh, into parts of Pennsylvania mixing with some sleet. That would eat into some of your snow totals. And as we move into Monday morning, some of that moves into parts of Connecticut. We have some winter weather advisories here. So from Hartford, Danbury, Waterbury, over into parts of southern New York, Orange County, I think we're going to see some sleet, some freezing rain, some snow with this. Not a lot, but it doesn't take much to cause problems on the roadways. And then this moves offshore pretty quickly. And then here comes some heavier rain to the west, western New York, down to Pennsylvania. This is moving into some colder air. It might bring another round of some mixed precip to northern parts of New England, but for the most part, we're looking at just rain out of this. Not a lot of snow uh, out of this system, but again, the freezing rain, a bit of a concern, especially for that Monday morning commute. There's that snow across northern parts of Minnesota, also North Dakota, and we are getting some heavy snow across parts of the Rockies, Idaho, Montana, down into Wyoming. Several feet possible, especially up into the mountains. And then another storm will be on the way as we head uh, into Monday. This is going to bring some heavy snow into the Cascades, down into northern parts of California, and into the mountains here as it moves inland. A little bit of snow, too, also into the Sierra out of this. And then behind this, another storm moves into parts of British Columbia. It's going to bring really heavy snow here. The heaviest snow to me looks to be from Northern California all the way up into the mountains of British Columbia. And we will see some heavy snow inland. Take a look at this. I'm pushing the models out through Thursday. This is wild. 207 inches being printed on the latest model just north of Vancouver up here into the mountains of British Columbia. That's going to be some concrete type skiing if you're headed to some of the ski resorts here. And even down into parts of Washington State. Let's see if that much snow actually falls, but pretty impressive. Here's your dividing line between your cold and your warm air as we head into Monday morning early, not just Monday, but through Sunday. It's going to be pretty mild into parts of Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi. We're going to get some thunderstorms out of this too. Some of those could be on the strong to severe side, especially here from Arkansas, go from Little Rock West down into eastern Oklahoma and north Texas. Some of these thunderstorms could also extend up into the Ohio Valley. A quick look at the future radar on that. The primary threat in my mind would be these discrete cells that get buoyant and they could produce some hail, especially as we head into this afternoon, this evening, and overnight that threat starts to shift off to the north and east and there could be some rumbles of thunder again into parts of Missouri, maybe even to southern parts of Illinois, Indiana, and western Tennessee, and then our front starts to move through as we head into Monday morning. You can kind of see that stretched here with some thunderstorms along and ahead of that early on uh, Monday morning. Across the east, heading into Monday, here's your warm-up ahead of the front for Indianapolis, Columbus, 
back into Paducah, Kentucky, Louisville, Nashville, Knoxville. We're talking about temperatures climbing into the 60s, even 70s back here across Mississippi. So a big difference compared to what we're going to see as temperatures take a tumble. Out ahead of the front, we squeeze the warm air north all the way up into Toronto. So now we're above freezing here into the 40s, but temperatures crash back down into the 30s. Uh, Across the eastern seaboard, heading into Tuesday, temperatures here also squeezing up close to 60 for New York, the Jersey Shore close to 60. We may push 70 here into the coastal plain of North Carolina. The warm air will come to an end as we head into the later part of the week. Temperatures dropping behind the front, and here comes the real cold, I think, by Sunday. Single digits, teens, and maybe even below zero here across the northeast and also across uh, the upper Midwest. Minnesota, Wisconsin likely dropping below zero. A closer look at the precipitation as we head into Tuesday. A front will move through. That may bring a little bit of rain and maybe some snow showers here to southern parts of Ontario. And our next storm starts to take shape. Let's take a big picture. Find where you are. If I haven't talked about your state or your city, you can find where you are on the map and follow along. There's the thunderstorms across Oklahoma, Arkansas. And then there's that snow moving through southern parts of Canada. Your snow across the west and low pressure deepening as it moves towards the Hudson Bay with a front draped like this. As we move into Tuesday, we're watching this piece of energy dropping in from the northwest. That's going to combine with some gulf moisture. It's going to cause some heavy rain, maybe even a few rumbles of thunder on the north side of that, some snow. Nothing new here, right? It feels like we're on repeat for the northeast, and a lot of you may be getting a little upset. Where is the snow? I don't know where it's at. I can tell you what the pattern looks like, and right now, it's not a snowstorm pattern. It's just not there. However, we are going to see these clipper systems move through, and I think as we head toward Christmas, I I certainly wouldn't turn my back on anything. Just because we develop more of a zonal flow, it doesn't mean you won't see something form. I'll be tracking it for sure, but this clipper system looks like it moves through the Great Lakes. Here is where your models split up as we head into next weekend. This just looks weird to me. Bring surface low pressure toward the Great Lakes, and then it translates that energy to the coast, and it tries to form a coastal low here across the northeast. That tries to put some heavy snow into northern parts of New England. It keeps Boston mostly rainy. This is a northern New England storm if this even comes to pass. I'm not sold on this yet. Behind it, what I am sold on is this cold air moving in with temperatures dropping heading into next weekend. Lake effect kicks up. Some of that could be heavy. The lakes are still unfrozen, so I anticipate more snow downwind of the lakes. And this fetch looks a little bit different, right? So now we've got more of a north to northwest fetch year versus kind of that westerly flow or at least northwest flow that may limit some of the lake effect for some places and increase it for others either way this is a cold arctic high building in and it pushes all the way down into texas and florida so temperatures on the way down it's not going to last though we've got a decent ridge building across the west with the storm moving in here that cold air starts to get pushed out as we head into the following week here we are on christmas eve what is this here are we watching something form across the southern plains Again, we are way far out on this. I'm not going to buy into any of these models yet. But again, I think with the zonal flow, with any little ripple that you get in the energy that moves across, there could be something that spins up. Let's keep an eye on it. That's what I'm going to do. This is a difference in the GFS. I want to show you with that northeast storm. As the low moves through the Great Lakes, look what doesn't happen. I told you surface low pressure translates to the coast and you get a storm that blows up. The GFS says, no, this isn't going to happen. It's going to be progressive. But what all the models, or at least both of these big global models the Canadian have, it's this cold Arctic air building in to the eastern United States. Arguably, the GFS not maybe as cold into Texas, into parts of Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, but it's still cold here generally for a good eastern third of the country. It also has that next storm moving into the west. That I feel confident about. Again, the question is, will we see a little coastal storm here to the northeast? Overall, there's some good agreement in the models here. A lot of people will give them a hard time. Sometimes there's a huge spread, but as of right now, this is a decently confident forecast. What I'm not confident about is how cold we get in January. I do want to show you where we're looking at now. There's that cold outbreak in the east as we head toward next weekend with your ridging across the Pacific Northwest. Another shot of some cold air I think will move in, but it's going to take a while. Your zonal flow starts to set up at least your Pacific air coming in here across most of the country. That keeps the atmospheric river going into the northwest. Cold air building across Alaska. This type of setup really puts the snow into the coastal ranges here into Alaska, also British Columbia, and then across the country, at least most of the U.S., fairly mild-ish, I guess. I think we do start to see a change taking shape as we head toward the 1st of January, and that's because you start to see more ridging across Alaska. And look, things dropping down here, right? So now you're not really seeing so much of a Pacific flow. You've got more of a Northwest flow. 
does this indicate that we could turn a little bit colder heading into January? Well, the long-term European weeklies are certainly advertising that. It could be a cold start to the year. I'm going with that right now, at least long range, heading into the first week of January. The question is, how far west does this trough get? If it's a little further to the west, that puts you in a game for a better east coast chance of an east coast snowstorm, especially if you can get some subtropical energy moving in, something dropping down in this northwest flow, and then boom, you develop a storm. And especially the further south it goes. Same thing could be said if this trough is a little bit further to the west. For the Midwest, that's what you want to see, right? You want to see that energy dropping in and something in the subtropical jet pull up and you get a big snowstorm. Will it happen? Well, you got to be cold for it to happen, and at least we are seeing signs of that if you're hoping for snow. Not everybody wants the snow. I try to be fair and balanced. So, again, none of this is written in stone. Maybe we blow towards the rest of winter. I kind of doubt it, but uh, hey, it is what it is. Thanks for watching, guys. See you.